for you? Well, I'm Ralph Stout, producer of Screen Snapshots. Oh, won't you sit down, please? I came here to interview you. You've been a famous star for many years, and I want your opinion on men. Oh, that's a subject I love to discuss, Mr. Stolb. Well, the men that I... Are those male stars who, in your opinion, were the most popular with American heartthrobs of the screen? Oh, well, then why not start with the greatest matinee idol of screen history, Francis X. Bushman. He was at the peak of his career some years before I ever came to Hollywood. But even so, I will never forget him. He was to millions of American women the very personification of romance. His co-star in most of his pictures was his wife, Beverly Bain. Wallace Reed, seen here with Theodore Roberts. Well, he certainly must be given high rank on any list of the screen's great romantic stars. Feminine fans considered him an all-American ideal. Another exponent of Pep was Douglas Fairbanks, whose marriage to Mary Pickford was as romantic in real life as his swashbuckling roles were in the movie's world of make-believe. Here you see him with Rudolph Valentino, William S. Hart, and Al Jolson. The final curtain has been rung down for all of them now, but they still live in the hearts of millions of devoted fans. Bert Lytell was a matinee idol on both the stage and the screen. I'm sure that older fans have not forgotten his triumphs in Lombardi Limited, alias Jimmy Valentine, and many other outstanding silent pictures. He was married in 1925 to beautiful Claire Windsor, whom you see with him in these scenes. If you younger moviegoers think that the pictures of yesterday lack romantic angles, I invite you to watch these stellar anglers, Conrad Nagel and Dolores Costello. Conrad was a silent screen favorite before becoming one of the top flight stars of the early day talkies. Richard Dix, oh, always an exponent of ultra-masculine aggressiveness, was a high-ranking favorite with feminine fans. Richard Bartholomus. For two full decades, that name, displayed on theater marquees, was an irresistible magnet for American women. Dick Bartholomus, specialist in moody, sensitive roles, was the star of scores of memorable pictures, including Broken Blossoms, Tolerable David, The Bright Shawl, and Dawn Patrol. Here you see him on the set with one of his many famous leading ladies, Dorothy McHale and Sidney Alcott, their director. Rod LaRock, almost always cast in dashing Devil May Care roles, appealed very strongly to the imaginations of feminine theatergoers. What lady in her right senses wouldn't welcome the dangers which threaten Luby Bellas in this scene? If only she could be sure that a handsome hero would rush to her rescue. Oh, what lady hasn't dreamed at times of a tete-a-tete -tete dinner such as this one in the years ago drama co-starring Rod and Dolores Del Rio. Yes, Rod LaRock's popularity was quite understandable. Ricardo Cortez, who skyrocketed to stardom when he played opposite Greta Garbo in The Torrent, was one of the screen's most popular Latin lovers in the late 20s and early 30s. You see him here being coached by his director. John Gilbert. My co-star in The Merry Widow. With him, at this long ago premiere, are Corinne Griffith and Walter Morosco. And here you see him with the famous novelist, Eleanor Glynn and Eileen Pringle. Few stars have ever attained the popularity that John Gilbert won in such pictures as Big Parade, Redemption, and The Merry Widow. As Sergeant Quirt, the love them and leave them devil dog in What Price Glory and the Cockeyed World, Edmund's Lowe won millions of feminine hearts. I think he deserves mention whenever the screen's great lovers are discussed. I must also include in my list of yesterday's heart throbs one of the finest actors of his day, 
Lou Cody. He delighted in portraying unscrupulous men about town. Naturally, women loved him. Ronald Coleman, seen here with producer Sam Goldwyn and Eddie Cantor, has been a romantic idol since 1923. 1923 saw the rise of another great male star, Adolphe Manjou, in a delightful picture entitled A Woman of Paris. Adolphe, glimpsed here with Diana Durban, shortly after her screen debut, has always been a specialist in suave, ultra-sophisticated roles. Lloyd Hughes, who scored his first screen triumph as Mary Pickford's leading man in Tess of the Storm Country, was acclaimed as the handsomest man in America by a noted French artist. With him in this informal off-stage shot are Mary Astor and Mervyn Leroy, their director. Harrison Ford's name was one to conjure with for many years. Romantic comedy drama was his forte, and his breezy personality and good looks made him a prime favorite with yesterday's feminine fans. Here you see him in a scene from one of his silent screen hits. The girl with him is Phyllis Haver. Mmm, <laughs> actors are traditionally superstitious, of course but you seldom see one carrying horseshoes with him in a briefcase. One of the greatest male stars of the pre-talkie era was Milton Sills, a specialist in man of action roles. Such pictures as the Seahawk won him an army of feminine admirers. Jack Mulhall's irresistible Irish charm made him an outstanding screen favorite and a sure target for a barrage of fan mail from the ladies in the audience. Incidentally, before he became a romantic idol, he won fame as the star of many early day serials. Hollywood has had many great male stars, but of them all, few have been so colorful as John Barrymore. Glimpsed here with Carol Lombard and Walter Connolly. I think he must be classed as one of the most outstanding romantic stars in all screen history. Miss Murray. If you were asked to name two of the greatest romantic stars that the screen has ever known, whom would you choose? Oh, I could answer that question without any hesitation, by dividing screen history into two periods, uh, the silent and the talky eras. I'd say Rudolph Valentino and uh, Clark Gable, wouldn't you? Clark Gable. Of course, Clark, one of the most virile stars in Hollywood, has always been a favorite with the men, too. But Basically, it was us, the women in the audience, <laughs> who put him on the throne he has held for nearly two decades. In this ten-year-old off-stage scene, you see him with the late Carol Lombard, who was then his wife. It is back in the silent era that we find the greatest screen lover of them all, Rudolph Valentino. No other male star has ever captured so completely the imaginations of so many women. When he, with Agnes Ayres as his leading lady, galloped across the screen in the chic, he galloped straight into the feminine hearts wherever the picture was shown. There was in his personality some mysterious force, a quality almost hypnotic in its effect. That set him apart from other stars. Not only did it make him the screen's greatest idol while he lived, it also has made him an immortal. It has now been more than 25 years since his tragic, untimely death. But no one has ever replaced him, and no one, I'm sure, ever will. Nor have the fans who idolized him ever forgotten Rudolph Valentino. He still lives in their memory, and through their memories his story has become, for younger fans who never were privileged to see him, Hollywood's most colorful, most romantic legend.